In this video, I'll be introducing the basic idea behind triple integrals and going through a very simple example. Let's see. So I'll introduce triple integrals sort of in analogy with what happens with double integrals. Uh, we have a function of three variables now. f is a function of x, y, and z. And domains of functions of three variables are regions in space as opposed to uh, regions on the plane. So uh, the domain of this function might be some, some strange shape some strange solid, I should say, in three dimensions. And well, let me give a name to this. I'll call the, the solid Q. And the way we uh, define the triple integral, which has this notation, is as a limit of a certain kind of approximation of Riemann sums, just as in double integrals. So what we do is enclose this inside a box. So I'll draw a box that fits around this solid. So let me call the box B. And I'm going to divide the box into a bunch of tiny uh, sub boxes, you could say. So this picture doesn't look like much now, but I'm dividing it into a bunch of tiny little little boxes. And let me give a name to a generic one. So if I go I boxes forward, J boxes to the right, and K boxes up, I'll call that box B sub I, J, K. And I also want to pick a sample point inside the box, which I'll write as X, I, J, K star, y, i, j, k, star, z, i, j, k, star. And, and the way we approximate the triple integral, or the way we define it, is as a limit of, of Riemann sums. So let me just write it in terms of an approximation. We want to take a sum over all boxes that fit inside Q. So let me write it that way. I'm doing a sum over all of these little boxes that are inside Q of the value of F at this sample point inside the box times the volume of each little box. So let me write that as um, sort of the change in xi times the change in yj times the change in zk. So this is length times width times height. And mostly we think of this as something that's done in analogy with, with two variables because in two variables we can interpret the double integral as sort of a volume under the surface. But here, that interpretation gets a little lost. We'd have to say something like hypervolume under, under the graph of f, which we can't visualize. So there's not much use in saying that. But triple integrals are useful for a number of things. Uh, namely, um, just as we saw in two variables, if we do a triple integral of the function that's equal to 1, we get the volume of, of the region just as in when we did double integrals, if you do a double integral of the function equal to 1, you get the area of the region you're doing the double integral over. So let me write that this way. The triple integral over Q of 1 dV will always give you the volume of your solid that you're doing the triple integral over. And that makes sense from the approximation, because in the approximation, you'd be taking the sum of the volumes of all of these the volumes of all of these boxes 
that fit inside Q. And the idea is, well, you'd keep doing this with, with a finer and finer division of Q into tiny boxes until this approximation was very good. So uh, let me just emphasize this is the volume of B I J K. Now let me just do a real quick example of a triple integral. Uh, we evaluate triple integrals just as we do in two variables as iterated integrals. And I won't go into these problems. We have a strange region yet. But let me just do a triple integral over, over a box, which is pretty easy. So I'll do a triple integral over the box. Let's say the box 0, 1, cross 0, 2, cross 1, 2. So this means the box where x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2, and z goes from 1 to 2. Let me draw a picture. So we go from 0 to 1, 0 to 2, and then 1 to 2. So you kind of get this box here. And let's just integrate some simple function over this box, say x, y, z. So I want to compute triple integral over b of x, y, z dv. Well, we have a version of this Fubini's theorem, which says that we can evaluate this as an iterated integral. Namely, we can just do this as integral from 0 to 1 with respect to x last, an integral from 0 to 2 with respect to y, and the first integral we do is an integral from 1 to 2 with respect to z, and the function we're integrating is x, y, z. So let me go through this. The first thing we're evaluating is this integral. So it's an integral with respect to z from 1 to 2, and we consider x and y both as constants when we evaluate this. So an antiderivative of x, y, z with respect to z alone is going to be x, y, z squared over 2. And I'm going to evaluate this from z equals 1 to z equals 2. Let me continue that on the next page. So here's my integral. The thing I just computed was that the first integral, which was x, y, z squared over 2 from 1 to 2, and I'm still integrating with respect to y and then with respect to x. So this comes out to be, I plug 2 into z to get 2 squared over 2. minus 1 squared over 2 dy dx. This is just 2 minus 1 half, so 3 halves. And now we're down to a basic uh, iterated double integral. And you can check for yourself that in the end you get 3 halves. And I'll stop there.